Welcome back to Between Two Fars. I'm Warnicky Miller, and I am joined today by the illustrious Robert Tepper and the amazing Michael Mark, two of NASA's veteran procurement attorneys with close to 90 years of procurement experience between the two of them. When we last left off, we were talking about the general requirements and expectations of the Rule 4 file. Now that is the first set of agency documents that are going to be filed when you're in front of the Armed Services Board of Contract Appeals litigating a contract claim. Well, this Rule 4 file, as you'll see, is a very important set of documents. So we wanted to dedicate a little bit more time talking to you about why it's important and some of the things you need to keep in mind as you're building your Rule 4 file and reviewing the documents that opposing counsel puts in. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you today? Doing well. Doing well, yes. So why is the Rule 4 file important? Well, the Rule 4 file is going to be put into evidence and there's an opportunity to take objections with regard to the Rule 4 file, but it's a wonderful procedure because it prevents you from having to go through the classic uh, authentication procedure and it uh, would take a lot of time and, and naturally many of our government contracts are extremely uh, complex and have extensive documentation. So in rem remembering that, you got to consider that a whole bunch of documents could be put into evidence and while you have an opportunity to scrutinize it, you want to take objections very, very seriously and not put off examining those documents until later on, because once it's admitted into evidence, you really have a rough time. Now, having said that, you can always go back and authenticate documents, but that gives those documents a lot more scrutiny. And another thing you can do is obviously the documents that you're putting into evidence are those that you already have. Now, that means that when you get into discovery with regard to documents that you request from the other side, those are supplemental documents, a supplemental rule four file. But tactically, some folks might consider not putting everything in all at once. The only issue that you might run into is that if you want to file a motion, if you want to get your story straight uh, right up front, and you should to be uh, not disingenuous, you want to make sure you tell the right story, you should put everything in that you've got, everything that it asked for. It's a, it's a wonderful procedure. It streamlines what would otherwise take days to do in many of our contracts. Michael, what sort of documents do you generally ask your team to begin collecting when you're compiling your Rule 4 file? Well, obviously the contract itself and the file that accompanies it. So you want to know what's in the specifications and all of that. You want to see all of the reporting that's been going on, particularly as it pertains to whatever the issue is, like if it's a differing site condition, what did we provide? What have they come back with? What do our technical people say? You want to see all of the reports that are filed by the uh, contractor, and you also want to see the core uh, or the quality assurance people's reports on what they're seeing and what they're finding. It documents whether we were tracking this problem, whether we made them aware of it, whether they made us aware of, say, if it's a different site condition or something like that. So you want all of that. And you want, obviously, the correspondence going back and forth between the CO and the contractor and also between the core and the contractor. So those are kind of the basic things that immediately that you're going to want to put into the record. Uh, then there's going to be things coming along as you, as, you know, your interrogatories and your depositions. Uh, those are eventually going to make it into the record as well. And the other side is also going to start putting its stuff into the file. I don't typically would expect it to be nearly as voluminous as what we're putting in, but we really need to make sure that they're not trying to sneak something in there that uh, either we're not aware of or is not germane or somehow not pertaining to what it is that we're litigating. And uh, so it, you, you do have to pay attention to what's going into that file. And when you're, when you're putting that file together, make sure that it's being put together properly, that everything actually is there, that any indexing is being done correctly so that we, we've got everything in the right order and it can be located again. I mean. As Bob has pointed out in some of the other episodes, you can have millions and millions of pages of documents in, in a big litigation. 
And even in small litigations, it's not uncommon to have many tens of thousands of documents. If the contract was going on for quite some time, there's all of the correspondence back and forth, all of the mods to the contract, any REAs or claims that were already settled out. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that you need to put into the record. And, and I like it, like Bob, to be as complete as possible. You don't want to have to keep dribbling and drab drabbing uh, information in. I think it hurts the credibility of our case if it's something that should have been there to begin with. Yeah, obviously anything that's referenced in the uh, you know, final decision, anything that you're going to respond to with regard to the answer, those things are there. And when you receive what you receive, you must be very careful because uh, there are instances where perhaps documents that you would take issue with regard to whatever they say, whether or not they're genuine, regardless, they could conceivably be an attachment to a document that's in the index that you are not otherwise aware of. So any attempt to just scrutinize the index and say, well, I've seen that, uh, you, that's a very dangerous thing to do because uh, later on you could find a, uh, a motion or in a hearing, a reference to a document which is an attachment, which uh, the opposition is going to say, you had an opportunity to object to whatever aspect of this document, you didn't, therefore it was admitted into evidence and uh, let's move on to something else. So you must take it very seriously and look at what all you receive and not just the index. Terrific. I really appreciate your insight and, and sort of the tips and techniques that will help us get through this initial phase of litigation. Why don't we come back next time and talk a little bit more about pleadings and some of the filings that we would do during motion practice, because we're just getting started with the ASBCA cases and we need to bring these guys back and talk a little bit more. So we'll see you again next time between two FARs.